Someone mailed me. Take a look at the city of Aden in Yemen. These are fossils of two gigantic creatures. Would this be possible? Of course, but not on a little blue ball flying in space. These creatures would be too big to survive. You need a bigger space. What happened? Let me give you an overview of how far I got. You have prehistory on a bigger earth. Then something happens. Reset. History on a flat earth. Then something happens. Reset. Space age in a heliocentric model. Something will happen. Will it be the great reset? Put this on a timeline. Prehistory on the bigger earth. Let's put a date on it, let's say 4000 BC. Start of history in a crater. 1250, half of the crater is morphed into an illusionary blue ball. Start of the space age. Now we are part of the Enterprise. This advanced base, or space station, will be headquarters for the final ascent to the moon. The entire wheel will slowly rotate at three revolutions per minute. The resulting centrifugal force will produce an artificial gravity for the men in the rim. Maybe it would be a good idea to focus on exploring space. Powered by the infinite amounts of zero-point energy, we'd be able to go across the solar system in a matter of hours. We could start mining asteroids and terraforming other planets. And maybe one day, we'd decide to relocate humanity altogether. But that's a story for another What If. Finally, two small rocket motors on the rim lasting for a few seconds, will set the wheel in permanent motion. Revolve three times a minute.
will be headquarters for the final ascent to the moon. Final ascent to the moon. Ascent to the moon. Ascent to the moon. We are on the moon, Werner. The only ascension I know is Christ going to heaven. So, the spiritual realms, grave Hades, that's the abode of the dead, the pit, Tartarus, bottomless pit, both on earth, lake of fire, not on earth, out there somewhere, heaven, earth. Let's recapitulate. So you have Hades and Tartarus, then you have earth and heaven. So if you want to ascend to the moon, you must be in hell. Reminds me of the Solomon system. Counter rotating. Let's presume that time exists. What would happen if you put a counter rotating mechanism in it? One pyramid would pull it forward in the future, the other one would pull it back in the past. So you would be stretching time. Take a timeline. Then you have the Solomon star. Now it starts stretching time. This is now creating a new timeline in which time is moving slower. Then you can start all over again. A timeline in a timeline. This is of course the concept of the movie Inception, reality, in reality, in reality. Let's go back to the arc. An arc, in an arc, in an arc. So the arc would be in this system, kind of reality projection system. Let's give an example. 100 years in the space age, would be 20 years in history, would be 4 years in prehistory. And everything, of course, would be playing out on the bottom layer. So instead of thinking in linear time, let's think in layer time. At the bottom, at a very slow speed, you experience prehistory. On top of that, history, at a slower speed. And then we have the normal speed, space age. So in this example we experience three time frames at the same time. Everything playing out in the past would be the blue pyramid. Tartarus. Tartaria. Matter in the top layer would manifest itself as mud in the underlying layer and in the second layer it would manifest itself as stone or fossil. Crater earth and fossil stories would be in the bottom layer. Everything concerning the mud would be in the second layer. Remember we are experiencing these three timelines at the same time. If you have a normal size at the top layer, you will be a giant at the second layer and a titan at the bottom layer. Giants are depicted on medieval paintings. In one of my videos I found evidence of a titan. This could mean when you stretch time, you are shrinking matter. If there is a blue pyramid pointing downwards, there must be a red pyramid pointing upwards. If there are timelines in the past, there must be timelines in the future. Stories about the greys, reptilians, probably are echoes from the future. If there are titans at the bottom layer, there are probably titans at the upper layer. The gods probably are titans.
How would this work? Take Lizzie and the dragons as an example. In a previous video I showed that in the landscape of Britain you can find two dragons. The dragons are in the bottom layer. So let's say that one second would be 100 years. Could this be possible? Take a look at microscopic life. How would they experience time? What if we were the microorganisms in a living dragon? A dragon living at a slower speed and therefore manifesting itself to us as a fossil. On top of that you have the medieval buildings. But suddenly because of this time experience a new history is appearing in the mud. In other words these buildings are sliding from the future into the past. In linear thinking of course this is impossible. Let's go back to the year 1250 when the crusaders moved the Benben stone. In 1250 they rewind history with 450 years. I made several videos about this. But at the same time I had the feeling that there was another date 1700 because then you have the rise of the machines. Let's say that in the year 1250 a new timeline was created. From 800 till 1700. That would mean 900 years. This would mean that in 2150 this new timeline ends. So I'm thinking what if all the layers around the earth are not air layers but time layers. What if each layer was a remnant of previous times? Time layer in a time layer in a time layer. So you have the original earth. Then you have reset one. A reflective layer is created around the earth. Now the earth can see its own mirror image. Then something happens. Reset number two. A second reflective layer is created in the first one. Reflection in reflection. Then a third one is created. Let's say we would have a reset in 2150. What would it be? Every reset the mirror is moving closer to earth. So reset 4 would zoom in even more. So reset 1 would give you this reflection. Reset 2, this one, reset 3, even closer, and the next reset would give you a very strange planet. Popping up in our solar system. What a strange planet. And after a while, people start noticing it has this strange X form. Could it be? Nibiru, of course, would be the reflection of our crater, Sirius. Conspiracy theorists in this timeline will notice that the continents are reflected in Nibiru. And in this case, they will be right. If you think you can see them in the moon, well, you're missing a few resets. Makes me wonder what is playing here. It's obvious they are preparing us for the next reset. The end of days. The apocalypse. By now everybody, except for some crazy conspiracy theorists, believe in the solar system. 
How hard would it be to persuade people that another planet is entering our solar system? This will be the official explanation. When they start pumping up the story of Planet X, the reset is near. But what will really happen? How are they going to create this event? Where are they going to get this amount of energy? This advanced base or space station will be headquarters for the final ascent to the moon. Our space satellite will have the shape of a wheel. Yeah, I'm sure it will, Werner. The International Space Station. What is space? When I'm looking again at the images of the space shuttle, it dawns on me that they can only film from the first time layer. Therefore, it will be impossible to shoot videos from the entire Earth. The question is, of course, what are they doing up there? 